Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So today, Team Grace, we celebrate the solemnity, it's the high feast day, of Mary, Mother of God. And of course, we honor the Virgin Mother of our Savior and the exalted, unique status given to her by God. But on this feast day, we also honor all mothers. Today, we acknowledge the vocation of motherhood and its essential role in the family and in society. Mary stands surrounded by every mother on the earth and throughout salvation history in order today to give testimony to the beauty and the power of motherhood. United, they have a shared message. This message is spoken by the thousand different acts of love, love for their families, love for their husbands, love for their children, and later by extension, their grandchildren. But what is this message of motherhood and how can it help us today? Well, actually, this message tells us a few things. First, it reminds us that motherhood is sacred. It's a divine gift. It should not be mocked, dismissed, or seen as subordinate to any other thing on this earth. Recently, as an example, I heard of a young mother in the parking lot of a local grocery store. She was there with her two little ones, and the motorist thought that she wasn't walking fast enough and decided to just sit on his horn, right? That's how we treat mothers today in our society. We mock them. What are you doing, lady? Get out of the way. What's your kids doing? Get them out of here. We got things to do. Get out of my way. This is how we treat mothers. I can think of nothing more sacred than a mother carrying her children, children who are helpless, but this is where we have gotten. Today, we are reminded of the sacredness of motherhood. We are also reminded that motherhood has no equals. There's nothing more important or essential or eternal than motherhood. We also are reminded today that life is a gift. Mothers have felt it. You mothers, you know this, that life is a gift, precious. You have felt it literally from the inside out. Our mothers remind us that life is beautiful to be honored and cherished. Mothers know it instinctively, spiritually, that life is to be, to be protected no matter what state or condition it might be in. There are some, regrettably, who would look at children with special needs and say, why are they here? Why weren't they aborted? Why would you do that to someone? What kind of life is that? But a mother sees something very different. She sees her child, whom she will lay down her life to defend. Mothers remind us of that, how powerful and beautiful life is. Today, Mary, Our Lady, the Queen of all mothers, she cries out this pressing message to all of humanity, and especially to the body of believers. On this day, the eighth day of our Lord's life, outside of the womb of his mother, we are told in the scriptures that Mary and Joseph take the child to be circumcised and to receive his name from his father. In these actions, the Lord Jesus becomes a true son of Abraham, a son of Judah, and a member of the house of David. And there his mother is, we are told, keeping all these things in her heart, reflecting on them as good mothers do. It will be his mother that the Lord will entrust us to as he is dying on the cross. We will be entrusted to her and she will be entrusted to us. As the Lord says, behold your mother and to her, behold your sons and daughters. It will be to the, Our Lady, to his mother, that the Lord Jesus calls into the upper room on the day of Pentecost to receive the power of the Holy Spirit with the apostles, not for priesthood as the apostles received the spirit, but according to her vocation as mother of the church. And so it's always his mother, a mother who is behind the scenes or at the forefront doing whatever needs to be done in order to be in service to her son. And everybody here, you know this, you know the vocation, the impulse, the drive that you have to serve your children and to protect your family. That's what motherhoods do. That's what motherhood's all about. That's what mothers do. And so today Our Lady, as she cares for the church, she models for us the vocation of motherhood. But our society today, it disgraces mothers. It mocks their openness to life. Just ask any mother of a large family of the horrific things that are said to her in public. Shocking, barbaric. Our society guilts mothers to leave the home when it's not necessary. 
Mother Church prefers the mother at home with her children, nurturing her family. If necessity requires it, then of course she must work. But if necessity does not, she should be at home and society shouldn't guilt her to leave. Our society tells mothers that they lack something and tells them to look for the meaning of their lives outside of their families rather than within the vocation they have with their families. Our society tells mothers that mother, being a mother, isn't good enough. It isn't accomplished enough. But what else have you done? I'm a wife and mother, but what else have you done? As if that's not good enough. As if that woman has not made some type of contribution to society. Tragically, our society even tells women that if a child gets in the way of her success or prosperity, then the child must die. It is a barbaric society that believes such things, and such is our society. Our society lies and tells women that in order to be acceptable, in order to have a successful life, she must literally build her life on the body of her dead child. Our society believes that we can create a perfect civilization over the bodies of dead children, and we dismiss abortion as if it's not truly a crime or tragedy, as if it's somehow dismissive or not that serious, simply because the life that is taken cannot be seen. But abortion, dear friends, and we know this as Christians, we know this as Christians. It's a no-brainer for us. We know as Christians, there is no greater evil in this world or in human history than abortion. Because the very aggressor, the one who is assaulting life, is the mother herself of the child. The mother who has received a vocation from God to protect, to defend, to cherish, to honor this life is the very one who is assaulting and taking the life. And her accomplice is a medical doctor or nurse who is under a solemn promise to do no harm, to defend life, and to protect the most vulnerable and the weak. And yet mother and doctor unite in the evil conspiracy against the destruction of an innocent child. This is horrific. And we Christians understand that. As Walker Percy, one of our Catholic Southern writers observed, abortion has become the anti-sacrament of the anti-gospel of death. And just as we believers would die in defense of a true sacrament, such as our Lord's presence in the Eucharist, if someone were to come into this church attempting harm to the Blessed Sacrament, I, and I pray we, would they lay down our lives in defense of this sacrament because we understand how sacred it is. And just as we would do that as believers of a true sacrament, so the anti-apostles of the culture of death would die and they would even kill in defense of their anti-sacrament of abortion. This is where we are. This is the pseudo counter false church that has been built up in our society today. The culture of death versus the culture of life. And depending on which one wins, it will determine whether civilization continues. Today Our Lady, the loving mother of God, and our mother too, exposes the lies of the culture of death. And this is why the ungodly feminists hate her. They despise Mary of Nazareth. This is why some of our religious sisters who have lost their way speak falsely of Our Lady and refuse her any homage. If you, don't want, to know, if you want to know where a Christian stands, look at how they honor or do not honor Our Lady. If you find a religious sister who has no devotion to Our Lady, get away from her. Keep that woman far from your soul because a true Christian honors Our Lady. And women understand that in Mary, they see the exemplar of their femininity and their motherhood, and they honor her, in particular as a woman, woman honoring woman. And this is exactly, in the midst of these lies, why we need Mary, why we need her witness, her ministry to us, and her maternal message. In the face of the lies, and the self-destruction, and the abortion, and the disgracing of motherhood, we need Our Lady to show us the way out of this darkness into her, son's, into her Son's wonderful light. 
We need Mary's intercession and her power. We need her motherhood to show us the way to love and to guide us back to the path of truth and goodness. We need Mary to lead us back to the Lord Jesus and to his gospel of life to show us what it means to truly love and to follow that most excellent way of love. And so on this day, we turn with confidence to this beautiful mother who has been given to us, to this queen of all mothers, and we surrender our lives to her patronage. We surrender the unborn to her protection. We surrender our country, which is still called to be the land of the free and the home of the brave. We entrust our country to her protection. And with deep faith, hope, and love, today we entrust the uncertainties and the aspirations, the successes and the failures, the health and the illnesses, the wealth and the poverty of 2021 to the Lord Jesus Christ, through Our Lady, always through Mary, to our mother, through her, to Jesus, that the Lord might bless us, that we might turn to her and allow her to guide us into choosing the path of truth and goodness, of choosing the path of motherhood, of always choosing the path of life. <laughs>